it's been long awaited. An innovation that has finally been brought to life. The idea of the EV scope was pledged by 2,000 plus backers raising $2.2 million on Kickstarter. An amount 15 times higher than their original goal. Armed with an exciting marketing campaign, Unistellar also made a promise. A promise to finally see. The EV scope is finally shipping out to his backers, and tonight, I will be able to try it out for about two hours. This will be the first time I am able to use it without rushing or waiting in line, like what happened last year during an event in Las Vegas. I will be looking at nebulae, clusters, and the moon. The location is the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, a bottle 9 zone near the Las Vegas Strip. The moon is almost full at 97% illumination. I will compare the EV scope with a regular rig of the same price, talk about the app, and some of the community features. I will also cover, once and for all, common questions about the scope. For example, is this a real image? Does it pull pictures from Google? What happens if you put your hand in front of it? Did you submit your questions to our social media? If yes, answers are coming. Alright guys, so tonight I am on my way to try the EV scope again, but this time just on my own. So we will see uh, how it performs, if it's good in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know. Um, I'm going with a very, very open mind, just so you know. I know this is a very controversial product uh, in this astronomy world, but um, I'm going with an open mind and we'll see um, what I think about it. <laughs> Unistellar flew to Vegas with the Eviscope inside a custom-made bag, which you can see here. It can be purchased online as an extra. Setting up is pretty straightforward. First, set the tripod down and level it using the attached bubble level. Then, grab the scope. Okay, so in the bag, we have the, the scope here. And I'm wondering what this is, we're gonna find out soon, I guess. And the tripod is here. The telescope and tripod have a combined weight of 19.8 pounds. Click the telescope onto the tripod, then tighten the screw. Lastly, take off both the cap and the included button of mask. Alright. Time to try it on. Uh, the button is right here on the bottom. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to uh, connect to the uh, EV scope on the Wi-Fi on my phone and uh, we can launch the app. So I'll show you guys what the app is like later, uh, but I'm guessing it's going to be pretty straightforward. Alright, so I'm seeing a, a live view right now. I'm going to move the scope uh, down and see what happens. Now let's look for a bright star so it can focus. Let's go with Betelgeuse. Well, hopefully it's still bright enough, right? So right off the bat, I noticed that it took a little while to reach its destination. It landed somewhere around the intended target, then took a few seconds before it corrected itself. But in the end, Betelgeuse was in the frame. So in the box comes a button of mask, which is interesting and helpful. So I can use it right here, um, which fits, I guess it's fine like that. And then using the knob, I can look at my phone, see the live view and try to find the perfect focus. So I'm going to turn the knob here to, uh, uh, to change the focus, which, we, which will move the mirror, the primary mirror right here, uh, up and down. Let's see if we can center it. Perfect. I think it's perfect. So, as you can see here, that's how you know your star is focused when all the spikes cross in the middle of the star. 
Ok, let's start with an easy object, the Orion Nebula, since it's right next to Beetlejuice. Once again, it took a little while to slew to the destination, which is surprising because it is so close, but M42 ended up perfectly in the center of the frame. I know you guys already saw this last year, uh, I just put M42 really quick in there, just for like, you know, 10 or 15 seconds uh, as a test. Here is the eyepiece, uh, I'm going to take off the cap, and uh, in there, so I see it in there already. Oh, and one more, oh, don't touch the telescope of course, bigger a mistake. <laughs> Alright, so many of you guys asked me if if it's a real picture, I mean, if it's a real image, um, you know, live, or if it's from Google. So I'm gonna try to put my hand in front of it and see what happens. So right now I'm seeing a live view of the Orion Nebula. And if I put my hand in front of it, I'm going to hide the, the tube. Now, oh, now it's pitch black. All right, now we have the live view in the eyepiece. And now I'm going to put my hand in front of it. I'm trying to aim. Okay, see my hand is now is in front of it. Uh, you can still see two bright stars. I'm guessing it's because I'm trying to hide the whole thing. But as you can see, my hand, uh, my fingers are still letting light through it. So as you can see, it's not fake from uh, from Hubble. All right, and now I'm going to activate the uh, enhanced vision, as they call it. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to uh, you know stack and stack and stack and stop uh, to get better and better over time. So the exposures are 4 seconds each, and every 4 seconds it stacks um, a new frame. The good thing is that you can see it both on your phone and in the eyepiece. And actually it looks more impressive in the eyepiece than on the phone, surprisingly. So you can really show... Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please screen. repeat it? No. That's interesting. Okay, M42 is too easy, so let's put the EV scope to the test on M1, which, to be honest, is kind of unfair since it is almost in the same field of view as the moon. So I was going to try the Crab Nebula uh, Miss K1, but it's like, I think it's right next to the moon, um, so I'm not sure it's going to work. Live view did not reveal anything besides the moon glow, so I waited for the enhanced vision to kick in. And it appeared. Let's talk about the stats of the scope before we see how it handles with the moon. The EV scope is a custom reflector telescope with an aperture of 114mm, a focal length of 450mm, and a focal ratio of f4. The sensor is a Sony IMX224, and the mount is a motorized Alt-AS mount. As for power, it has a battery that lasts about 9 to 10 hours. The telescope by itself weighs 15.4 pounds. For comparison, our own reflector weighs 17.5 pounds, while our smaller mid-70mm APO weighs 4.5 pounds. For the moon, Unistella told me they were still working on it, um, so I had to use the manual slewing to find it and play with the manual settings so the contrast and all that uh, so it won't be too overblown. So once I played with that, I was able to see the moon nicely. And once again, it felt much better in the eyepiece, so through the eyepiece, it just looked better, uh, looked more white, looked more popping uh, than on the phone. So um, it's really interesting. I think it's because of the circular field of view. Um, and also because maybe it's a bit cropped compared to the live view on the phone. Um, I'm not sure, but it once again looked better through the eyepiece. I looked through the eyepiece and at this moment, I truly thought something was off. When looking at your phone or the eyepiece, the color of the moon was different in each one. For now, I don't know if there is a reason for the color difference. 
Of course, I tried M31, a classic, and was expecting to see a great image of it. It was low, but at 35 degrees above the horizon, it shouldn't be a problem seeing it. I was kinda disappointed because the live view was super noisy and I couldn't see anything. After activating the enhanced vision and recalibrating, the noise went away, but everything became red. It could have been because M31 was right above the Las Vegas Strip, but in any case, I did not see the Andromeda Galaxy that night. So what about the app? Let's talk about it before we attempt one last target, the Flame Nebula. In it are five tabs, EV scope. This is where you can see the live view, enhanced vision, and control the telescope. Explore. This is a catalog of objects to choose from. Currently, there are 4,000 plus objects, 180 of which have descriptions. Science. This is where you will see community events. When an event is in progress, you can look for asteroid occultations, exoplanet transits, cometary activity, and more. The fourth tab is the gallery, where your saved images will appear. Finally, the last tab is the user profile tab, where you can see your stats, update the EV scope, check the battery, and change your settings. So the app is great in general, I mean it's really easy to use, it's straightforward. Um, I want to say though, it did crash a few times at night. They told me they were working on this, so probably going to be fixed during a, a next patch or update. If you were slewing, for example, or if you were imaging a target or observing, like, for example, the moon, and your app crashes, you can just launch the app again and just jump right into it. You don't have to recalibrate. Lastly, let's try the Flame Nebula. The slewing speed, by the way, is about the same as our Atlas EQG mount. The live view did not show much besides Alnitak. I activated Enhanced Vision and waited a few minutes. So from Las Vegas, here is a shot of the Flame Nebula in 24 seconds. Here it is again, with a total of 4 minutes. I wish I could have spent a full hour on the target, but sadly I just didn't have the time. Unistellar posted this shot some time ago on their Facebook page. It is a total of 14 minutes from a bottle 3 zone. I'll be honest, this seems like a fair result for 14 minutes from a dark zone. I will note though that the Bright Star Unitac was way more bloated on my live view, so there might have been some kind of post-processing on the computer there. So many of you guys asked me to compare the EV scope with a similar setup of the same price. But this is what some people don't understand though. The EV scope was not built with uh, astrophotography in mind. It was built focused on you know visual. So there is no point of comparing the two, uh, unless you want to compare visual of course. But if you compare visual, um, how to compare them? Because one of them is pure visual, uh, the other one is just is visual as well, but with the, the screen in there, so you can't really compare. Yes, you will see more with the EVScope, but at the same time, you won't have the real, you know, feeling of seeing it, you know, live. Yeah, it's, I can't, it's, you can't compare those two, uh, you can't. But you know what? Let's do it anyway, because I know you want to. Here is a single 6 minutes RGB shot of the Horsehead Nebula, taken with my own equipment. Let's add up the numbers together and see how much it costs to get something like this. The DSLR camera, although you can find much cheaper ones out there, but let's take mine as an example. My telescope, 500 bucks. The mount, let's add the serious mount because the Atlas is an overkill. We get $2,686. Now let's add the comma character, which is important for this telescope. We get $2,893, without counting the guiding which is not 100% crucial. If you find a cheaper DSLR camera, which is more than likely, then you can even add the guiding, but either way it's going to be the same price for both setups. We are comparing my single 6 minutes shot from a bottle 4 zone with the 14 minutes shot from a bottle 3. Obviously, a regular astrophotography setup wins.
Let's go over the pros and cons. Pros. Portable. Obviously, it fits in a backpack, which is great. The app. The catalog of objects to choose from is enormous at 4,000 plus objects. Yes, it will not be the go-to mount that has 45,000 plus, but still. Most importantly, the live view and the manual slowing features are very nice to have. Social events. I was not able to try any of these, but I believe it's a fun addition to the app, and I think many of the backers got interested in EDScope in the first place because of this feature. Lastly, I believe a smart telescope like the EVScope may encourage new people to get interested in astronomy. In my opinion, that's a good thing. Now, what are the cons? First, no filters. As of today, you cannot put any filter on the telescope. Besides a solar filter, I'm surprised there is no built-in light pollution filter. Then, focusing is done manually with a knob on the back of the telescope. Thankfully, the scope comes with a Batinov mask, which should make things easier. But for a smart telescope, I wish there was a way to focus just from the app. Then, sometimes the colors don't match on the eyepiece or on the app. That was only obvious for the moon because it's so bright and white, but there was a kind of a yellowish tint to the moon on the app. And lastly, finding an object may take some time or fail if it's far away from the starting point. As you saw earlier in the video, the slowing process itself is quick, but it can take a bit of time when it's trying to center an object. We got a lot of interesting questions, and we got all the answers. I realized that answering them all here would make this video way too long, so please visit our written review to see the answers. Now, would I get the EVScope? Well, the answer for me is going to be no, mostly because most of my time is spent on imaging, and uh, once again, the EVScope is mostly for um, visual. And if I want to do visual, I already have a good enough gear for that, so uh, for me, I don't think I will have a use for it, mostly because, um, you know, considering I'm already so deep into the hobby. It's very different from a regular telescope, but, um, yeah, if you don't care, if all you want to do is just observe, share, and enjoy, and maybe in the past you've looked through an eyepiece, and all you've seen is just a grey patch and you're like, that's it? Um, then maybe this EVScope is good for you. No matter how many people are gonna say that this is a toy and that you can build your own for three times as cheap. Who cares? I mean, we're not all engineers, right? So both the EVScope and uh, Strina, which are both smart telescopes, have been out for a while now. And if you go on Instagram, you will see plenty of posts uh, from people who own these products and are very happy with it. So I told you, the EVScope is not something for me. But I love astronomy and I will embrace all the astro innovation that come over the years. So if a product like this one will help bring newcomers to this hobby and explore the universe with us, then you know what? I have nothing against it. So I'll see you guys next time and clear skies.